Golf. Perhaps the easiest sport to understand, but arguably the hardest to master. It's a game requiring self-reliance and discipline, and it forever tests one's ability to adapt. To win on the PGA Tour is something that most people just dream about, even a lot of the tour players. But for Greensburg, Pennsylvania native Rocco Mediate, he has validated his game by notching 12 victories and posting career earnings of more than $17 million. Good execution there from Rock. He's been calling the good approaches from the fairway crispy. That was crispy out of the sand. Perfect. In fact, not only has he accomplished greatness, but he has forever placed himself in one of the greatest golf matches the game has ever experienced. The 108th U.S. Open Championship. Although not victorious, Rocco would capture the hearts of all who play the game. He would accomplish legendary status. Rocco attended Florida Southern College in Lakeland, Florida, where he led the Moccasins to a Division II National Championship. It was highlighted by a life-changing birdie on the final hole. Rocco quickly began climbing the ranks at the professional level. However, his journey as an athlete was met with hardships as his back began to suffer from years of training and competing. He didn't let that stop his desire for success. Rather, he just considered it an obstacle to overcome. Well, he's been hitting so many good putts, and I'll tell you what, how timely is that? He was featured in the top 20 of the official world golf ranking and is considered one of the best putters to ever play the game. In 1991, he sealed his career into the world of golf forever when he became the first player to win with a long putter at the Doral Ryder Open. That really changed the game. I mean, it impacted the rules, it impacted the way we taught the game, and so his contributions are significant from that perspective. You never think about it, but the young generation that followed him have all wanted to try to putt like Rocco Media because he is a leader in that regard. Putting his way through the 1993 Kmart Greater Greensboro Open, he landed himself yet another victory. As his accomplishments grew, his injury had as well, leaving him with a ruptured disc that required back surgery. It's a really hard sport. I've done it since I was, what, 15, so a lot of years. But I wouldn't trade a second of it. I wouldn't trade a second of it. In 1994, doctors told him he wouldn't be able to compete again, and the world of golf was left to believe Rocco Mediate's career had seen its end. This would end the journey of most athletes of this caliber. But by 1999, not only was Rocco golfing again at the professional level, he showed the world that he is still one of golf's top tier players when he placed first at the Phoenix Open, a tournament stacked with players such as Justin Leonard and Tiger Woods. On the final day at the Masters in 2006, Rocco was in contention to win the event until the par 3 12th hole. It was a solitary journey, but it was one no player could make alone. Golfers everywhere felt his hurt, but he endured as he always does, with a smile and lovable attitude. His best finish in a major championship was a second place showing at the 2008 US Open at Torrey Pines. Tied with Tiger Woods at one under after regular tournament play, then tied again at even par through the 18-hole playoff. Even though he's playing in the US Open in a Monday playoff against Tiger Woods, he still had that jovial way about him and you could just tell he was having the time of his life. Woods finally bested Mediate on the first hole, hole number seven, of sudden death, the 91st hole of the tournament. It was only the third time a U.S. Open playoff had gone to sudden death. In Rocco's career, he has competed in 49 major championships and delighted the spectators with his infectious smile and welcoming attitude. Of all of his practice through the years, he wishes he spent more time practicing with his putter, funny coming from arguably one of the best putters in the game. In 2016, he won his first senior major championship in Benton Harbor, Michigan, with a three-stroke victory over the defending champion, Colin Montgomery. In fact, his winning total broke the previous record by three strokes and was the first wire-to-wire -wire victory at the event since Jack Nicklaus accomplished it in 1991. He remains very active today and is a momentous part of the senior tour. However, I will say that June 16th, 2008, was as most memorable, most emotional, and heroic day for all golf fans. It was the finest competition by a true gentleman our game has ever witnessed. 
Since that historic event, outside the beautiful backdrop of Tory Pines, Rocco has taken many steps towards his coronation of stardom. He's led a remarkable game from just being the walking embodiment of the sport and all its virtues. Rocco's a fun-loving, enjoyable, friendly fellow who makes you feel like, you know, he could be your buddy. He emulates what we all want to be, comfortable and relaxed when we play the game of golf. I think a lot of that comes from his relationship with Arnold Palmer. Arnold always made everybody feel special. And I think Rocco's relationship with Arnold gave him the desire to help carry on that legacy that Arnold started. And so Rocco likes to look you in the eye and smile at you and make you feel special. Arnold Palmer once said, Rocco was wonderful. I thought he was fantastic. I think he proved to the world that he's a pretty good guy and a pretty darn good player. So tonight, we honor the son of Tony and Donna, the father of Marco, Nico, Rocco, and Francesco Rose, the husband of Jessica. His 12 victories on the tour, his top 20 accomplishment of the official World Golf Rankings, his high honors on the all-time money list certainly sets him apart. But let's not forget, his work ethic is legendary, and the golf audiences around the world consider him a friend. Rocco, we admire you and recognize you with this honor you so truly deserve.